Hello there, welcome to Technophile. We're at the Symbian Smartphone Show this week here at Earls Court, and later in the program, I'll be explaining why this little camera takes exactly the picture you were expecting. Symbian's mobile operating system is found on many handsets, and the company is now allowing other developers to innovate and create new mobile applications. We checked out some of these emerging ideas, and first up, a toy car controlled by a mobile phone. It was just an experiment because uh, another professor of our university wanted to try making the car um, more interactive so that we can control it from the phone or from the PC. Um, so we decided to add a Bluetooth module to it. And so now we can connect with a normal mobile phone to the car and control it with the movements of the phone. We had the first prototype working in one day on the phone and the car is a hardware modification so we had to build our own hardware module for it. This was a bit uh, more difficult. But of course the real challenges were then optimizing the usability because uh, there are many different uh, small things that you don't know at the beginning like how to hold the phone, how to make the offsets, how to do everything right. So it was quite an improvement uh, over the first version. Playing games on your handset is nothing new but there is a new way to play mobile phone games. Researchers at the University of Applied Sciences in Hagenberg have developed a way to connect your mobile to a Nintendo Wii remote using Bluetooth. So now you can play that mobile phone game, but instead of controlling it with a mobile keypad, the Wii remote does the work. Artist Jürgen Schiebel, aka Moby Lenin, has created an application that allows him to paint with his phone using its motion sensors. For me, mobile applications, I believe, in the future will be about creating something not about you know getting some information only to your phone and interacting with other people but you go out and create because the phone has so many features there's the video camera the normal camera like the motion sensor uh, gps and all that kind of stuff and that enables you to create actually so the software i'm using here it's called python it's a runtime it's open source which runs on, on nokia smartphones and many other phones as well nowadays and it's very simple to use with three lines of code you can program already a, an application the mobile software which empowers users to do the most in that field, they hopefully will get most attention and most phones will be sold by those guys because it's about empowering the people, empowering the users. And what about other ways of capturing images? Scalado have come up with innovative solutions to improve photo applications. So what you see here are several megapixel images. And usually when browsing these types of images, it's very, very slow. So it makes it difficult to find the right image. So if you have a lot of images on your phone, you want to find the right one really, really fast. So for example, if I open one image, I want to see the details of it. So here, I can zoom in really, really quickly. And again, usually this is a very, very slow operation that requires a lot of memory as well. But our unique pattern technology makes it possible to do it in very, very low memory and very, very fast. So our Panorama application is unique in two ways. To be able to capture, as I showed you before, a really high resolution panorama image, that's possible to print. So that's a really good quality. And the other thing is, instead of doing this manual stitching, I'll press once to start the uh, automatic panorama capturing. And then you can see it automatically tracks how I'm moving my camera. And when I'm in the right position, I don't have to press again. It takes the image itself. And now, I can zoom instantly in this really large image. Catching the exact picture you're after is often difficult, given the time lag on a lot of current handsets. But this may be a problem solved. What we've got here is we've got no lag between the image appearing on, in, the, in the camera and in the viewfinder, and when it's captured, you're capturing exactly what you see in the viewfinder with no delay. What we've got here is an Omnivision camera, 3 megapixel camera, which is streaming continuous JPEG images into the hardware of the, of the phone, into the viewfinder. So that this is being updated continuously with JPEG, 3 megapixel JPEG images. So that when we actually go to capture, when we select it, what we see on the viewfinder is actually what we capture. Music is also a prominent mobile application. So what's new here? Well, there's a lot of interest now in uh, movies, playback of movies and things like that, and also in, in fun recreational applications for kids. For example, on Nokia phones at the moment, there's a 16-track drum machine which you can put together your own beat loops on. 
which is tremendously fun to use. I, I use it all the time. And I think that's going to be extended till we reach a stage where kids will actually be making their own songs on just the mobile phone itself, using no other technology. Even singing in tune, there are plugins which, uh, on the PC which can do that, and because of this standard, those can be quickly ported onto the mobile phones. So we're nearly at the stage where anything you can do on a PC, you can do on your phone? In a practical sense, yes. A lot of these developments come out of Symbian's decision to go open source. So what's the thinking behind that? I think it's just part of our, our general mission to be the most widely used software in the world. Um, we've got pretty far so far, but we thought to make that next step we need a big leap. And the best way to do that is go open source, remove any limitations of licensing, and just to open up to more developers so they can come in, innovate, contribute, um, and just get more people involved, really. I think what everyone's focusing on the moment is really, I think, the user experience of the device. We've got a lot of great functionality in phones these days with the location awareness, with the sensor frameworks that can detect movements, with the touch tactile, uh, with the new network connectivity speed. So I think it's all about, next year it's all about bringing this together into sort of simple to use, uh, easy devices that are really, just bring the functionality right up to all users. What are the latest smartphone handsets out there? We saw just a couple at the show. Nokia's latest is the 5800 Express Music, which has the expected touchscreen interface and is especially geared towards multimedia usage. Samsung's latest offering is the i8510, which is Europe's first 8 megapixel camera phone, has all kinds of functions, including Smile Shot, which, when activated, will only take a photograph when the subject smiles. We also saw a handset that's not yet on the market, but might be one to look out for in the future. It's the Samsung i7110, and they're highlighting the new organic screen technology called the AMO LED, which allows better resolution and color vibrancy. Well, finally here at the Smartphone Show, let me show you one other rather useful application, particularly for outdoor types. This is View Ranger by Augmentra, and it's a sat-nav application for a phone. Nothing particularly special about that, but here we are in the Lake District, and if I'm going walking or hiking rather than driving around in my car, I've got an application which is pretty neat. Go into panorama mode here, and suddenly the phone switches down to ground level and I can see where I'm heading. I can zoom in towards that destination if I want to, or come out to a wider angle. I can look to my right or to my left, and if I get lost and want to check exactly where I am on the map, I can go back to the top view. Neat, huh? That's about it for this week's Technophile. Don't forget, keep right up to date on all the new technology, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. skynews.com technology. Till next time, goodbye.